Good morning again. Is it morning still? At this time, we're going to participate in the very sacred service of ordination of elders. And I understand that we have two candidates to bring before us today, and so we're going to ask that Elder Seth Kalasang and his family just come stand in front here. We're also asking that Elder Mark Alfred Rudis with his family come forward and stand here, and then we're going to ask all those who have been ordained before that you would surround these gentlemen with their families. Everybody who's been ordained, please come forward at this time. We want families to come. We want families. It's beautiful, all the families together. Thank you so much. Pastor, would you mind? Every uh, pastor or elder that has been ordained, if you're sitting in the congregation, we ask that you come stand with them. All right. The Apostle Paul had his protege, Timothy, and gave Timothy directives as to how he should behave in a sin-sick world. And so in 1 Timothy chapter 3, he talks about deacons, but we can replace these deacons with elders, with the name elders. And so the qualifications of elders, likewise, must the elders be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy or filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of an elder, being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave and slanderous, not slanderous, sober, faithful, in all things. Let the elders be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. For they that have used the office of an elder well purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. You are aware that we are living in perilous times, times where we need men and women to be faithful to the cause of God, not yielding to every sin-sick uh, trial that may come upon them, but will, with those trials, be joyful. Elders are not, they said, the, the apostle said, to be grave. In other words, what that means is to be grave is not to be double-tongued, but you to be worthy of respect. Every elder, ordained elders, be worthy of respect, not be double-tongued. Don't say one thing on one day and another on the next day. You have to have a certain character trait that will lead you in all spiritual things. Their wives also are to be held with respect, not slanderers, meaning not guilty of defamation of character, Sober means temperate, possessing self-control, and dependable in all matters. I love what Paul says here, holding to the mystery of faith. As capable defenders, elders preserve the truth that God has revealed to you. I was speaking last night to a friend, and we talked about how this world is quickly coming to an end. There are about seven billion plus people in the world today. And elders, we need you to be strong because we are outnumbered if we look at it through worldly eyes. But if we can look through it through heavenly eyes, we'll see that we have a host 
an army that is far greater than Satan's army. You are not alone in your walk. Always know that you will have help from other elders, from other church members, from other deacons, from other pastors. And when we are not around, you can be sure that the angels will encamp about you. So be strong in the Lord and the power of his might in your duties. And I pray today that as we ordain you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, that your true characters will shine forth with glory so God can be pleased. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father and our God, we deem it a privilege to call you our Father. Lord God, we pray that you continue to be with Elder Mark and Elder Seth. We pray that you would surround them with your Holy Spirit and let that Holy Spirit rest upon them like you rested on Simeon when you were born. We pray that you would bless them as they lead out in this church along with the pastors, that, Lord, there will be a cohesive unit that will spread the message to the corners in which they have been entrusted. It seems overwhelming, Lord. There are just a few of us, but, Lord, we know that a host of heaven are also with us. The unseen guests who protect our families, who protect our children, are with us. And we are so thankful, Lord, that as you sit on the throne, you're not sleeping because the Bible says you never sleep and you never slumber. So if we are having problems at 3 o'clock in the morning, you are awake to answer our prayer. If we call upon you in the afternoon, you're not tired. And so we ask, Lord, that you would bless these elders as we consecrate them to you. Bless the pastors, Lord, as we surround them that we will know that they and the rest of the world will know that we are Christians by our love. Bless the, the, the family, Lord. Bless the wives as they are supportive of their husbands. And Lord, when these days shall be no more on this earth, we will look back on this day and say, yes, we have joined the army of the living God. We are prepared for battle. So continue to be with us in the precious name of Jesus, we now ordain them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We have some certificates for you. Uh, this certificate is presented to Mark, Elder Mark Rudis. Is, am I pronouncing that right? In recognition by this church of your spiritual leadership qualities and the call from God into his service as an elder. Congratulations. Congratulations. This certificate is presented to Elder Seth Kalasang in recognition by this church of your spiritual leadership qualities and the call from God into his service as an elder. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.